Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. How are you? And uh, welcome to all of you who are on the stream. I see we had uh, Richard Maloney was the uh, very much the early bird, but was just here to chat. I appreciate that, Richard. It looks like you got quite a chat going there with T-Bone and Mike's Aquariums and uh, Post Seawee, Aquarium Treasures, Craig Broderick. Hello, Craig. And Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Doug M. Hello to you, Doug. And uh, welcome to everybody that's on the chat. Kind of, kind of scrolling through it here. See what's going on. Love the way you folks get into some conversations here before the uh, before the stream even starts. Hello, Rock Island uh, 105. And Cave, hey Frazier, Cave Frazier, how are you? Let's see. Hey, Rich, uh, is it Richter? Richter Belmont. Hello, Richter. I've got your last name right. That's the high school I went to, Belmont High School in Los Angeles. Notorious. Hey, Tom, over in Malibu. Hope you're doing well, my friend. I'm sure you have uh, cooler weather than we have here. Tends to be a few degrees cooler out by the coast. And uh, all tanked up. Broken compass. Hello, buddy. Mina Anderson. And hello, Mina. Thank you, Posiwi. That's a nice thing to say. Thank you so much for that. So uh, welcome, everybody. And hello, Cat Sailor. And uh, thank you to Aquarium Co-op for the nice t-shirt. I think this is Murph, his, uh, his mascot. A giant puffer with a lot of personality. Uh, someday I might pick up a puffer. They seem to be, uh, they're really cute and uh, love those little buck teeth. So um, go ahead and share it. We have, I think, what, 39, 40 folks on. Uh, this is the last minute stream. I hope you're drinking out of one of these or one of the many cups that are available on the uh, at the Teespring site. And let's go ahead and give this uh, give this an official an official start. Hey, Adam C, good to see you, buddy. And uh, yes, I am going to be joining you. I guess uh, somewhat in the Midwest. I am going to be heading out that way. And I think you, you mentioned that uh, St. Louis is not that far of a drive from uh, Nashville. We'll definitely have to have to set something up. Uh, let me see here. Robocop. I think I do remember you somewhere. Let's see. Aaron Bankhead. Hello, Aaron. From Ontario Ranch, California. Love it up in the Ontario area. I go up there with my uh, family to vacation sometimes. If that's the Ontario I'm thinking about. Near Ventura. If it is, you've got the best fish tacos around on the Ventura Pier. Just my opinion. And uh, hey, Jerry. Gerald Martin comes in with $4.99. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate that. We'll put it into the moving fund that I'll talk about later today. <laughs> Kristen, I'm going to be eight hours from you over in Nashville. Now, I want you folks to put your uh, put your good vibes, put your uh, your thoughts, your prayers. <laughs> the house is going through the the uh, the house that we picked up is going through inspection, and assuming that the um, assuming that the foundation is sound, that it's not uh, full of termite damage, we should be uh, good to go on the 28th of September. For closing, and uh, for those of you who have who have acquired a house here in the United States, uh, you know, you know it's not done till it's done. So, uh, and for those of you who are new, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you get uh, so you get notifications. And for those of you who want to support the channel, a great way is to use the Amazon link when you go to Amazon. Whether you need fish stuff, I'm always adding new things to the store, but whether you need fish stuff or anything from Amazon, if you use that Amazon link, it actually uh, helps the channel with a small percentage, doesn't add anything to your cost. 
also uh, the Teespring store where you can get things like mugs and t-shirts and stuff all of that helps the store and also all of you who uh, super chat you folks really help out a lot and I appreciate it so different ways that you can help the channel sometimes some of you ask how you can do that and that's the end of that commercial so um, I flew out to uh, Nashville and uh, last Thursday and we we looked around we saw some places that um, the description was very far from the reality in other words when you get to the property it, it's um, it's maybe just a, a block away there's some you know very sketchy looking places um, places that you're pretty sure are uh, are probably cooking crack you know breaking bad type of stuff <laughs> and so we decided to keep looking and um, we were starting to get a little bit discouraged and uh, there was one house that the pictures were were eh, they were okay but let's you know we're in the area let's go take a look anyway and it uh, it turned out to be a very nice house and uh, we went ahead and uh, and and went visited twice and we we took a tour and we're just very impressed with it we decided to go ahead and do it more on that in a second uh, this Saturday don't forget spread the word and uh, tell all your friends that uh, we're going to be doing the uh, the big drawing these are the folks that have jumped in so far and uh, but there are going to be more I think there may be another surprise vendor that's going to be jumping in I'm not going to say any names yet I'm going to wait till I confirm it but uh, you'll you'll like this vendor and uh, we have gift cards, <coughs> fish food, uh, you know, things of this nature, fish, and uh, all kinds of stuff. $50 gift cards and uh, $100 from Nolan over at the uh, uh, Nolan's Aquarium in Santa Ana, California. Uh, some food from Piscine, a very high quality food maker. So um, we have some good stuff. That'll be Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Be sure to tune in. Uh, Mary, thank you so much for that $4.99. I really appreciate it. And uh, Gary, I'm going to be three and a half hours from you. That's nothing. That's like going to Las Vegas. So uh, maybe we could, maybe we can all meet at a fish store down there and uh, work out some kind of a little live stream get together. That would be kind of fun. I have a lot of wheels turning right now. The biggest, uh, the first, the biggest wheel is how in the world am I going to get everything I have here to there, and um, I have uh, a few ideas already on uh, what to do with the fish. I do have a local vendor that might be helping me out with that. And uh, I, I might be taking the equipment with me. And it'll be, uh, you can be pretty sure it'll be video, video documented and, uh, and shared with all of you. Uh, the house that we ended up locating, I'll show you that's the house on the outside on the left side here the uh, the far this right here is the outside of the house it's about 3,000 square feet not counting the garage which is going to be the fish room and uh, all brick which is very unusual for a California person to see you don't see a lot of California uh, homes made of brick uh, unless it's external you know just decorative because of the earthquakes so to see an all brick structure was very, uh, very new to me, and uh, I, I loved it, loved the look of it. And uh, 3,000 square feet, I think it's got four bedrooms, nice, nice kitchen, so my wife is happy. And um, that side door, this, there's a side door that, that's on that bottom picture here. This picture right here, you can see that fence, you follow it to a door. That door opens up to a garage, and uh, the garage you can access, of course, through the garage door, and you can access it from the house and also from that outside door. And um, I'll show you the garage. The garage will be converted into a uh, into a man cave, where we'll, there'll be some exercise equipment on one side of possibly some partitions, and then the uh, fish room. And I'll give you a quick tour here of the garage space. You can see it. This is going down the stairs from the house door. 
all the owner's junk is still in the garage, but I want you to get, it's a finished garage. You can see the walls, it's all finished and insulated. Very high ceiling. And you can see the amount of space in this garage. Tremendous amount of space. And um, there's a workbench there and some storage for my fish goodies. And then right here by the um, by the hot, we hot water heater is where I'll probably put the water source, the sink and hot and cold water source. And if I don't do that, I'll end up maintaining tubs with heaters and maybe some crushed coral for uh, minerals. But you can see, and it's hard to tell with all of the previous owner's junk in the garage, just the size of this place. But this is a very, very large two-car garage plus storage. So I'm looking forward to all of that being out of there. And uh, I may actually have some help from somebody, someone that you would recognize, but I'm not going to say it until it's finalized, uh, might be helping me out in the setting up of the fish room. So it's going to be uh, quite an adventure, and I'm looking forward to it. A lot of work, tremendous amount of work. I've got to set it up so that it can stay. Um, I have to set it up so it can stay uh, warm. It needs to be able to stay warm in the winter because you do get freezing conditions in Nashville. Uh, they do get snow, and I need to set it up so that, of course, uh, it remains optimum in the summer. It gets very hot, 90s, and, and a little humid, so um, I've got to make sure I have the right you know, equipment in there to control humidity and temperature and all that good stuff. But it will be, uh, I think it'll be a cool little uh, fish room man cave when it's all done. Rico Stan, thank you so much for that. And uh, you are welcome. I as you know, I love sharing uh, sharing whatever whatever I know with you. Adam C., thank you, my friend, for jumping in. I appreciate that. Every, every bit helps. And um, that's the update on Nashville. And uh, like I said, for those of you who, kn who know about acquiring homes here in the United States, the, uh, you, know, you, do get, you, you do have to go through a process. There has to be inspections. Even though we've, we've committed, there's earnest money, there's paper that's been signed. And uh, before you think, oh, my God, his YouTube channel is making so much money that he was able to go and buy a a home in Nashville. Uh, we actually are going to be renting the home from our son who um, works for the Phillies and needs to start investing. So he's buying it and renting to us and we're going to pay him uh, the monthly payment so that, uh, you know, help him out to get going on his investment. And so, uh, no, I'm not getting rich off of YouTube. <laughs> Anyone familiar with YouTube? Adam C., you know what I'm talking about. Uh, very few people get rich on YouTube. <laughs> Some do, but it's a very small percentage. <laughs> Hello, Aquaballs. How are you, buddy? You got, uh, I shipped out something to you today. And uh, uh, Chris, if you're still on, I shipped you something also. So be watching for a small box. So um, do any of you out there, have any questions but before I get into questions let me say let me just say one thing I I, I got a, a an email today from somebody in India someone named Sayan S, I think it's S-A-Y-A-N Sayan in India and uh, his question was uh, how do you bring out the best the best uh, out of the fish he said he, he liked what he saw in my tanks and he wanted, I think he called it groom. How do you groom the fish to get the best out of it? I wrote back to him uh, an email, a him or a her. If you're from India, is Cyan a male or a female? S-A-Y-A-N. I can't, I don't know. But I'll, I'll, say, I'll say him for just for the heck of it. But I wrote back to him and uh, Spellchecker changed his name to Satan. I felt terrible about that. I went back and checked the email, and I put, oh, my God, I'm sorry. Spellchecker changed your name. I wasn't familiar with Cyan, obviously. Felt terrible about that. But anyway, getting to the letter. So uh, I started thinking about it, and, and uh, what, I, what I wrote back to, it, 
to the person really is just basics. I mean, in, in, this is my opinion, and your input, of course, on the chat is always appreciated. But I, I think to bring out the best in your fish, you really just have to have the basics. And by basics, I mean, you know what they are. You could probably say them before I do. Good water quality, right? Which means stay on your maintenance, be sure your filters are not dirty, do your water changes, right? Good water quality. Proper parameters from uh, proper hardness, uh, right? Dissolved solids, minerals. Uh, be sure your temperature is right. Be sure your pH is right. Uh, you know, those things like that. Stay on your schedule. Don't skip your schedule. And if you skip your schedule, please don't skip it for too long. Uh, stay on a schedule that's pretty consistent. And also, uh, stress. Try not to stress your fish. And by stress, I mean don't let the water parameters go off. That creates stress. Don't have tank mates that, um, that drive each other crazy. And in a cichlid tank, that's a, that, that means you're always vigilant. You're always watching. You're always observing and seeing what's happening, looking for uh, torn up fins, looking for chases, things of this nature. You stay on top of it. And, and uh, you, know, you don't mess with things too much. And, and so you keep the stress levels down. You keep the water the way it's supposed to be. You stay on top of your filtration. And you know what? You'll uh, Oh, and the last point, good quality food. Don't cut corners on food. Uh, be sure your food doesn't contain a lot of fillers, uh, color, you know, diet dyes. Uh, it's not too heavy in binding agents. Watch for a lot of uh, fogging after you feed. That can be a, a sign of fillers. And, uh, you know, go with foods that in the first five ingredients, certainly the first three to five ingredients, are good quality ingredients, right? Your, 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 your fresh fish, your, you know, shrimp, your... Your, whatever it is that make sure those first ingredients are good quality ingredients you know spirulina things of this nature if you see uh, wheat and soy and uh, you know fillers in the first three ingredients you probably have a low quality food and it's going to cloud up your water and it's going to give very limited nutrition to your fish because of that their ability to fight off disease is going to be reduced so um, so I sent Cyan a detailed email and then an apology for getting the having the name changed <laughs> incorrectly and uh, but those were the tips and I thought I'd share them with you because um, you know sometimes people ask about things like color and things of that nature um, and uh, you know the healthiness of the fish I do have some fish that are getting very very old my uh, this this fellow here this Xerox is very, very old, and I think he's getting near the end of his life. It's kind of sad to see, but you start to see signs that tell you that they're getting close to the end. Uh, their body shape can change a little bit. They can become less active. Uh, they can eat less, and so their stomachs can cave in just a little bit. They can show signs on the outsides of their body, like their uh their color and their scales don't look quite as healthy and you know they can start to look a little bit worn these are signs of old age and sometimes you'll beat yourself up and ask yourself what am I doing wrong why does this fish look like that you might have an old fish when you bought them you didn't know the age of the fish and uh, now the fish is at the natural end of his or her life cycle and uh, they start to decline rapidly uh, unfortunately, aggressive fish like these, when they see a fish in decline, they'll start to go after them, and that only makes it worse. And so um, if you have a fish that's declined like that, uh, don't beat yourself up. Don't think you're a terrible fish keeper. Just realize you might have had an old fish, and uh, you didn't know how old he was when you bought him. So um, you might have got a fish. You thought it was pretty young, but maybe he was an older runt and uh, was already three or four years old and uh, Abraham Monroy thank you so much my friend let's see here question hurricane Laura is approaching my area I keep discus and Africans any recommended preparations also love your channel brother thank you Abraham I would uh, get some battery-powered air stones 
battery powered um, get some better battery powered uh, air pumps like the ones that are made by cobalt they have a dongle you know that you can plug in with a USB and it can it can provide 48 hours of charge uh, they also kick on automatically in the event of a power outage. They also have ones that you can charge with a battery. The first thing that will probably kill your fish, unless you're living in a very, very hot or very, very cold area, uh, the first thing that could probably kill your fish is uh, a lack of oxygen. Because all your water movement stops, the top of your tank will seal. Uh, CO2, bad gas, will not escape. It will stay in. Uh, maybe the temperature will rise, make it even worse, and dissolved oxygen will, you know, oxygen cannot dissolve, and your fish, fish will start to suffocate. So, uh, air stones, battery-powered air stones that either have built-in batteries that recharge or uh, battery, you know, that run on AA batteries, get some of those. Best solution, of course, is have a, uh, one of those U.S., P, I think they're called backups, battery pack backups. They use them on computers. Uh, another option, of course, is to have a generator, and you can run an extension cord from the generator to your filter, a gas power generator. Those can be expensive, but you can pick one up maybe at Facebook Marketplace or eBay, something like that. Um, the other, the other thing is maybe have a few tubs of water, have a few buckets of fresh water sitting around. You can exchange some water out. If you don't do that, you can take water out, let's say a bucket of water, and just take it out and then pour it back in. That'll create water movement. It'll add oxygen. You can even stir the tank, things of that nature. If the temperature starts to get too hot, you can put a frozen water bottle in there. Uh, there's different things you can do. Usually getting too cold is more of a problem, but not usually an issue in the summer. Um, I hope that helps. If you folks have any tips on a hurricane, uh, certainly the first priority is you being safe, you and your family, of course, uh, but power outages can be a real problem. Also, be sure to test your water before using it after the hurricane because you may have some very serious toxins that have gone into the water source. So you may want to test your water before adding it to the tank. So you might be better off at least for 24 to 48 hours after the hurricane to take water from the tank and, uh, you know, really stir it up, oxygenate the heck out of it, pour it back in, and that will add some oxygen to the tank. So I hope that helps. Abraham, if anybody else has any ideas, please go ahead and share them. And uh, let's see here. But thank you for that super chat, Abraham. Much appreciated. And Adam C., I think I thanked you already. We did make a point of not buying a house in Tennessee that was in, uh, I think there's a tornado alley. There is a tornado section in Tennessee. And we made sure we were in the part of town closer to what's called Franklin, which hasn't had anything like that in uh, over 100 years. So we're hoping nothing, uh, nothing changes in that regard. Uh, Francie? Thank you so much, Francie. That's appreciated. Thank you for that super chat. Hello, GP. GP, I'm glad you could make it. GP was not here last week. I hope you saw the replay where we showed his picture wearing the uh, wearing the Teespring hoodie. <laughs> All right. And uh, thank you. For, it looks like another uh, another super chat. All, all I'm gonna do is talk about the super chats here. Hey, Remco, coming in with ten. Uh, Remco, are those 10, is that 10 pounds? I'm not sure what that emblem is, but thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate it. All right, let's see if there are any other questions here. I'll show you that, um, let me show you what I was talking about here. This is the um, the rescue air rescue air from Cobalt, and uh, 
what it has is it has this this thing which you can charge with a USB holds 48 hours of charge two days of charge in this thing and uh, comes with an air stone and some very very soft airline which I like I don't like airline that gets hard and brittle and uh, you can see the unit right here it's not it's not inexpensive they run about um, maybe 50 bucks but you get um, I think 24 hours with just the unit and then when that runs out you can add this and then you'll get another 48 hours so three days and uh, if you're three days without power you've got other problems my friend so and I'm sure it happens I've heard stories so uh, that's something that uh, you may want to consider uh, investing in you can go to my uh, my Amazon my Amazon store I do I do show them at the Amazon store and your price will not be any higher if you use my store but it will help the channel if you use that link Richard Stevenson thank you my friend I appreciate that I appreciate the help the money is going into the moving fund <laughs> for those of you who arrived late we have committed to a home in Nashville um, in a town called Bellevue which is uh, just adjacent to Franklin where my daughter and my son-in-law live and so um, we're very excited it has to get through the inspection process uh, and through escrow we're targeting the 28th of September for a closing date uh, in which at which time they put the keys in our hand and that's that's when uh, it gets very very serious and I start packing boxes and uh, we start preparing and uh, it's very exciting and it's also a little bit overwhelming to move that far you know I've moved across town a couple times. I've lived in Los Angeles 65 years. So it's, uh, it's gonna be an interesting adventure to, uh, to go south. So. <laughs> so thank you, Richard. And let's see here. Uh, L Flower, I, I, I don't know how long fish can live without power. Uh, like I said, it's the oxygen depletion that can become an issue because they're they're in an enclosed box, of course. Depending on the stock level and the size of your tank, naturally a larger tank with less fish is going to last longer. A very highly stocked tank, I would say you'd start to see some distress within maybe 12 hours. I've had power outages here in Los Angeles for six hours. I was at work. By the time I got home, six hours had gone by. Fish were fine. They were not gasping at the top. Uh, they were just kind of hanging out, acting normal. So um, that tank wasn't too heavily stocked. Mike Catman, what would you say are the three top peacocks with regards to keeping the peace? <laughs> you know, you think somebody, you think a breeder. I know we breed for color and size. I wonder if any breeder has ever tried to breed for temperament and just get, you know, the, the most peaceful peacock with the most peaceful peacock and you know, create this long line of, of, uh, of good temperament. I wonder if that's even possible. But uh, I would say um, your bicolor 500 doesn't get too big, top side at around five inches. Uh, Benga Sunshine, Ruby Red, Flavescent. Uh, none of those have ever been really violent. Uh, none of those have been, you know, ones that I've had have been too rough. Um, your um, your Lemon Jakes, your Otter Points, your uh, Protomelis, like your Taiwan Reefs. I'm getting into the haps here, but your you know your Taiwan Reefs, your Tangerine Tigers, uh, you know, they're going to be very very. They're, they're going to be pretty feisty. Uh, your Plastidochromus, like your deep water Electra back there. This guy right here. Very peaceful. Trouts can be very violent. 
I found that uh, your sand divers can be pretty cool. They're just kind of big goofy guys. I've heard stories. Your hawks can be pretty cool. My hawk and my sand diver are com almost completely colored down here. This guy has been never a violent moment. That is a, uh, a long nose. That's a hap, a long nose. So, um, those would be my, my choices. You know, your sunshine, bicolor, 500. Your, um, you know, those guys, your, your ruby reds, your, your uh, German reds, I think you're going to be fairly peaceful. Uh, you, you start getting into, I mean, you start getting into some of those other ones I mentioned, you're going to have some chases. Now, one thing about, uh, one thing about peacocks or cichlids in general there's exceptions to everything. You can get a Venusus that is mellow, and you can probably get a bicolor 500 that's a total jerk. And if you look long enough, you're gonna find somebody who has a story about a ruby red or a uh, Benga sunshine that killed off a bunch of fish. Uh, it, you roll the dice with cichlids, you always do. Placidochromus would be, uh, but you know what? My, my Maduka white lips can be a real jerk. He can be a real jerk. And, and uh, Lethronops, if you want a peaceful tank, consider Lethronops. Red Caps, uh, Monkey Bay, you know, gold uh, Lethronops, Monkey Bay. Uh, beautiful fish and pretty peaceful. Uh, Mina Anderson wants to find out about Pyrogen. Mina, what do you want to know? It's a, uh, it's a, it, it's considered a chemical filtration. It's a, uh, it absorbs, it absorbs. You don't want it in your tank when you're doing medication because it'll absorb the medication. Uh, operates a, a little bit, a lot like carbon. It, it, if you're just starting a tank and, you, and you're getting frustrated with cloudiness, it's a great product. It'll clear up your tank and make your water crystal clear real quick. Once my tanks became established, I pulled the pyrogen out. I don't use chemipure, I don't use pyrogen, I don't use charcoal. If I medicate, if I have to medicate, I will use charcoal for one month after medicating, after the fish are all better. Uh, I'll put charcoal in, usually matrix. I love that charcoal, activated carbon. But um, I would go ahead, I would go ahead and, and uh, recommend it without any hesitation. It was a really good product for me when I needed it. When I, was, when I had what some people call new tank syndrome and um, it, it really helped out for the tank to get really like the floating in air kind of look that you want. And then once that got really established and you know bacteria blooms were over and algae blooms were over uh, and the water became very clear, I gradually started pulling it. If you're gonna use it, I suggest you use the bag not the loose stuff. I mean, you can use the loose stuff uh, in a fine mesh bag. You can make your own, but it's probably easier just to get the bag and recharge it following the directions. You can recharge it eight times, and so you can keep reusing it. So you really get your money's worth. I consider that to be one big advantage over the ChemiPure products uh, in that you use once and then you throw away. So I think you get more life out of Pyrogen than you do out of ChemiPure. So let's see if there's some more questions. Both of those, Kimi Pure and Pyrogen, are at the Amazon store. Amazon slash shop slash Ben Ochart. Let's see. Richard, did I acknowledge you for that five? I think I did already. Thank you so much. And let's see if there's some more questions. Uh, Ives Barrera, the air pump that I showed you with the um, p battery backup built in from Cobalt. This one, I think it runs at about 50 bucks. And it comes with a built in battery that charges when you have it plugged into the wall. And then what it does is you can program it so that it's off. And then when it, when it picks up a uh, power outage, when it detects a power outage, it starts pumping. So you could be away or at work, and when uh, and it's plugged in, so it's keeping the battery nice and charged. 
and when the power cuts, it has a sensor, it shows the power has been cut, and it turns on, it starts pumping air. It'll pump, I think, for a couple, uh, for at least a day to two days, and then you can use this, which will pump for two days. This is the, you charge that with a USB. And again, you can see those at the Amazon store. So let's see here. That's right, GP. If you see the fish uh, moving their mouths excessively, that's when you know oxygen has gotten low. Uh, they're hanging out at the top. The top of your aquarium is where the most uh, oxygen is. So they'll, they'll go to the top and they'll work their mouths up there trying to get some air. It's like, uh, imagine breathing through a straw. And, you know, and so, and their hearts are probably pumping, you know, they're working hard trying to uh, get oxygen to the body. And so imagine going up a steep flight of stairs and you have to breathe through a straw. So definitely you want to stir things up during a power outage, get the oxygen going. All right, let's see what else is going on here. T-Bone, recharge my Pyrogen last week. Yeah, you know, some people are afraid to recharge it. They, um, they're afraid because they think it's going to, uh, it's going to, because they don't like putting the bleach or whatever, you know, that 24 hours of bleach, they get a little bit of, uh, frightened by that. But it, uh, it works okay. It, I've done it many times, I've never had a problem. So I think that, I think what's bad with the bleach ends up, uh, it actually just gasses off. So YouTube is giving me one of those messages that there may be some breakup in the, in the stream. GP, can you tell me how sound and picture are looking? That would be great. And Peter Barron, hello Ben, I was curious. Hey Peter, thanks. Thanks for that five bucks, buddy. Curious if a person can win more than one time from Saturday's vendors. Um, family, family, and uh, and uh, moderators can't win at all. And it's going to be random. I'm going to move the, I'm going to I'm going to move the chat, and my daughter's going to say stop. And wherever her finger is, that's going to be a winner. And I'm going to move it again, and she's going to say stop, and uh, and that's that'll be the winner. So it's uh, I guess you can win twice, but uh, you would be mighty lucky. And uh, we're going to have two drawings. There's going to be a uh, a super. Anybody who super chatted is going to be in the super chat drawing for the uh, uh, because of the original announcement. I want to stay tr true to that. So the original announcement was that. Uh, for the uh, expert Matic air pump and the um, algae scrubber. So all the super chat names are going to be going into a big basket. And, uh, and then the, th those will be picked by hand. And then the, um, uh, the rest of the stuff will just move the chat around. And with, you know, my daughter will put her finger on it and we'll, we'll try and keep it as, as, as fair as possible. And uh, there will be no no funny business. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Cat Sailor, let's see. You know that's that's also Cat Sailor. That's also why. You know sometimes people will heat up their aquariums to fight ick. So they'll run their temperature up to about 85 degrees. And uh, that prevents the ick uh, cycle from completing, right? From dropping off the fish, hatching, swimming up, attaching to the fish. That cycle is broken up in a high temperature. It can't survive in a high temperature. So if you move your temperature up to like 85 degrees, uh, that'll stop the ick. However, at 85 degrees, uh, a lot of your, your, your water at the very top of your tank, you're going to have a, a, an accelerated evaporation and you're, where, where the most oxygen is and you're going to have uh, the oxygen dissolving into the tank, I understand, is harder in hot water, so uh, in warmer water. So this is why when you're doing an ick treatment, 
or in the summer when you unplug your heaters, but it's so, you know, it's so damn hot, the tank still gets up to 82, throw an air stone in there because otherwise your, your, uh, your fish could start to show signs of oxygen depletion. Now, a tank like this where I have a sump, I have a sump down below where I have a lot of trickle going on, a lot of water movement, a lot of, you know, I have two, two algae scrubbers in the, in the sump, each one with bubblers. I'm not worried about oxygen on this tank. Tremendous amount of oxygenation. Uh, in the other tanks, let's, let's say the 60, uh, or the, uh, even my 30 gallon uh, quarantine tank, if those were to get into a high temperature, an air stone would be a good idea because um, it's gonna be hard for oxygen to dissolve in there. Our Baglio, hello my friend. Five bucks, I appreciate it my friend. Welcome back Ben, nice, nice place, gonna miss you here in SoCal. Um, I've been suffering. Man, I love jumping in my car and going down to the beach, hitting Malibu, Huntington Beach, Manhattan, gorgeous beaches out here, I'm gonna miss some tremendously. I'm gonna come back and visit a lot. Um, you know, born and raised here, but um, my daughter's in Nashville, and I, and I hope we become grandparents, and I want to be close when it happens, and uh, plus I love the fact that there's no income tax in, in Tennessee. There's no uh, payroll income tax. I can buy a gallon of gas for $1.85 a gallon. I'm paying three fifty a gallon here, so there's a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons why we're going. <laughs> That's some of them. Uh, Peter, let me see. I think I answered your question already. And uh, Ed's Aquatics, thank you, Ed. And uh, good luck. I hope you win. <laughs> and um, you know, Mike, uh, uh, Mike Catman, if if you are willing to help with the shipping, I think international winners. Uh, who are willing to help with the shipping, we can do something like that, sure. I mean, let's say that uh, an international winner wins um, a $250, $300 uh, one of the algae scrubbers paying 25 bucks US for uh, 30 bucks for shipping, probably not a bad deal. Uh, Madeline, thank you so much, Madeline. I appreciate that. It looks by your little cartoon that you're giving me coffee bunny. That's always appreciated. It is cichlids and coffee, right? Let's see here. Okay, Mr. Ed's Aquatics, making a plea for more likes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Appreciate the backup. Uh, Firemouth82, how hard does the water need to be for African cichlids? Uh, you know, usually uh, you do want pretty hard water uh, you don't, I don't. You don't want soft water. You want uh, a good amount of calcium, magnesium. That's more for uh, pH uh, stability at a high level. Uh, it does. Uh, what these? What I, if I understand it correctly, the minerals help to neutralize nitric acid, right? So when you get to the end of the nitrogen, you get you get a, as you move along. I won't say the end because some people will say the end of the nitrogen cycle is when the nitrogen converts back. I don't want to get, in, get into that discussion right now. <laughs> but in the nitrogen cycle, when you get to nitrogen, you, you, you get the nitrates, that's nitric acid, and the minerals uh, help to neutralize that. And so <clears throat> in fish like these, uh, like these guys here, they produce a tremendous amount of ammonia. Yes, I'm talking about you, sir. They produce a tremendous amount of ammonia, and uh, I understand that cichlids are uh, perhaps more than most. Maybe it's because of the feeding. Maybe it's because of the uh, heavy stocking that we use to spread the aggression. But uh, they are they are waste factories, and so uh, yeah, you want to have a good amount of minerals. I add minerals through a uh, a coral and shell substrate. That's my way of keeping a mineral, you know, minerals dissolving into the water. So um, when I get, you know, when I get to um, when I get to Nashville, I'm have to figure out what's the water like. Do they um, 
is it soft? Is it hard? I don't know. I have to do some research. I might be uh, Ben O. Rainbowfish. Uh, <laughs> ben Ben O. Discus. Uh, when I tell, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what the water is like there. If it is very soft, if it is very soft, and it can give me, it can keep, it can keep me at around eight point zero, or at least seven six, like Ray Ray Cooper is saying. Uh, somewhere between 7.6 and 8.2. If I can't stay in that range pH, I may have to set up tubs and have a lot of uh, limestone and uh, coral in those tubs and some, you know, maybe some bubblers and, you know, create some good bacteria, create some mineralized water, and then use that water for water changes. So there's some, there are ways to work around it. And I, I may have to get, I may have to get creative. Uh, what are a few reasons why the fish would stop eating? This is happening with one of mine, unfortunately. That's from Daniel's Aquatic Life. Uh, a lot of reasons, Daniel. Uh, you could have a, a blocked intestine, uh, what usually turns into bloat. Is the fish uh, looking caved in? Is the stomach caved in or does it look bloated, like f fat and swollen? So you could have a couple reasons. If it's caved in, you might have a parasite uh, that is also creating a blocked intestine. Some people think that if you use salt, maybe pull the fish out, put them in a small quarantine tank, add, let's say it's 10 gallons, add one tablespoon for every five gallons, dissolve it first in a cup, then add it gradually. That can work sometimes as a natural laxative, get them going again. If he's blocked, if it's parasites, you're gonna need to start treatment. Uh, something like API General Cure might help. Uh, you might also have a fish that's under stress that is being harassed and when they're harassed and under stressed they almost become afraid to eat because eating is competition and another fish may be actually hitting him really hard when he tries to eat and so he just stays in the corner again pull him out put him in a separate tank uh, let him gain his strength and then after he starts eating regularly again put him back in there's also a chance he might just hate the food that you're feeding and doesn't like it. Uh, in that case, you can try adding a little bit of focus, a garlic product, something like that. Maybe try a, uh, depending on the kind of fish, I wouldn't recommend worms for cichlids, but if it's not a cichlid, you could try bloodworms. You could try um, frozen krill, which some fish find irresistible. Uh, cobalt, or oh, I'm sorry, omega-1, uh, cichlid cubes that contain garlic. The formula contains garlic. The fish go crazy over them. They're called omega-1 floating cichlid cubes. Uh, you can mix up the food. Try some flakes. Try some uh, krill flakes. Uh, those are made by Piscine. I think uh, Northfin has some uh, krill flakes. So it could be a variety of things. And I hope you figure it out because uh, the fish will waste away really, really quick. And uh, very often it's stress and being harassed, and that's a hard one. Okay, Madeline, I think uh, we already said, gave you a shout out there. And Leo. Leo Contreras, thank you, my friend, for that. And you're asking, put my Mabuna in a QT treated for parasites with for a full treatment isn't eating that much. Again, I mean, maybe try something that's irresistible. Uh, soak in a garlic solution like Focus. Uh, garlic Guard, you can get a hold of Garlic Guard. Soak the food in Garlic Guard. Uh, try something uh, that's really hard to resist. Maybe, uh, like I said, something like a, a frozen krill or yeah, sometimes it just gets to a point where you can't bring them back. Hate to say that, but it's a reality. I, I've seen it happen. But um, also maybe some salt. Maybe a little bit of salt is all. Might, might get the intestines cleaned out. Uh, maybe try a little bit of a veg, you know, like a uh, Northwind veg formula. 
maybe a, uh, uh, some, some uh, vegetable flakes, something that is light, can be digested easily, can help clean out the system. Maybe drop in uh, some frozen peas, take the, take the skin off, drop a few frozen peas in there, see if there's any interest. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I hope he makes it, but uh, sometimes it's hard to bring him back. At any rate, uh, did I miss anybody? GP, did I miss any any super chats? If I did, I'm sorry, folks. I'm trying to I'm trying to trying to keep up here. Any other questions? Go ahead and ask them now. And uh, if you're wondering where Candy is, Candy, uh, I believe Kevin and Denny work, and Candy is uh, on other live streams, so she's tied up. There is no alcohol in my beverage, in case you're wondering. Okay, anybody here have catfish? So the first person that says, yes, I have catfish, send me your address. I'll send you this. Someone sent it to me. I don't have any catfish. If you want this, API bottom feeder for catfish. Send me your address if you have catfish. You want to start a, do you want to start a sponge filter in an aquarium so that you have a source of beneficial bacteria that you can use in a, um, in a quarantine tank? Be the first one to say, yes, I do, and send me your address. This is from Aquarium Co-op. This is one of the Aquarium Co-op sponges. And... Uh, Send me your address. You're the first one on the chat. I'll get you some of this. I know it's hard to track. And uh, Denny or uh, GP, tell me who's the first one who uh, said yes on these. And uh, if you can, if you can keep the uh, keep the paperwork for me. Uh, if you want a dwarf aquarium lily bulb from Aquarium Co-op, dwarf aquarium lily bulb. Uh, say I want a dwarf aquarium lily bulb in the chat. I'll send it to you. If you want easy root tabs, root zone fertilizer from Aquarium Co-op. Say in the chat, I want easy root tabs. First one to say I want easy root tabs. <laughs> Gets a pack of easy root tabs from Aquarium Co-op. And... Uh, yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, first one to say, I want a sponge filter. I want a sponge filter. <laughs> first one to say, I want bottom feeder. I want bottom feeder. <laughs> and uh, GP, let me know who the first ones were. Send me your email address to ben.o, or send me your address to ben.o.cichlid, and I'll, uh, I'll ship it out to you. So uh, on that very positive note, <laughs> as you folks, your fingers are burning. I love it. Anyway, I love giving this stuff away. So um, I went to the post office today and uh, shipped a few things. I get a lot of joy out of that. So uh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate all of you who sat in today. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the moderating. GP, you're awesome, my friend. And um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up and i hope you folks enjoyed this i will see you on saturday for the uh, for the drawing uh gp bring a notepad because uh we just did a little exercise <laughs> this was a dry run on saturdays <laughs> bring a notepad on saturday and uh if you folks are uh if you haven't already be sure to hit that sub button and uh hit the bell so you get notifications uh, and uh, follow me on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid for some behind-the-scene previews. Come on over to Facebook for a great group of fish keepers. Uh, we love getting into some good conversations there. And um, very helpful group. No trolls are allowed. Uh, so you can ask questions. Uh, 
And uh, be sure to answer all three questions. If you want to join the, uh, the Facebook group, if you don't answer all three questions and agree to the rules, the moderators don't let you in. So please answer all three questions. I hate to see people turn down. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Kristen, Leo, Daniel's Aquatic, Ray Cooper, Francie, GP, Mark Trevor, Mary Spelling, Mina Anderson. Thank you, everybody. You are the best on YouTube for sure. That's it for me. Thank you, everybody. I will see you on Saturday, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Bye-bye.